In my last video I showed you this special strange looking IC integrated circuit and I had no idea what it is except that this a TU60 and it has uh, 17 pins looks like a big uh, dip package but I, have, uh, I had absolutely no uh, information and thanks to my viewers on YouTube they wrote some comments I found out it is a uh, Mollard Philips in Europe it was Philips Mollard in uh, uh, England I think it's called a Norbit 2 uh, timer unit and that's where the TU comes from timer unit from the 60 family and these chips here came in different colors so the data sheet says this one has the color red which is not really true it's black but uh, the data sheet is the correct one I just uh, checked that and uh, well let's see what it is and how they used it in 1973 or maybe before that so this Norbit uh, chips have been around since, since the early 1960s they have then been replaced by the 74 TTL uh, chips as we know them today or maybe they have already been replaced by other chips um, it's a family of logic chips and the timer unit is just like a time delay that's the input and after the last input pulse it takes a certain time until the output goes to high so you can use that for any kind of time delay uh, circuit you need of course this is only one building block so if you want to make uh, a circuit you need different kinds of blocks so that's the pin out here um, and we also have the internal circuit which is relatively simple it has four transistors one diode one center diode and a couple of resistors and I'm pretty sure if we open this case we will see all this component in discrete uh, uh, cases there is no it's not an integrated circuit with uh, a chip inside but it's just a circuit that has been encapsulated with this resin in different colors to see the difference okay so let's have a look at the case you see there are two notches here and the purpose of this is uh, there is a, a frame where you can <coughs> screw them down like this and then the next chip next chip you can make a big array of chips and the interconnections here between the chips can be done by soldering of course uh, you could also make a PCB that was not really uh, what they usually did and uh, you can use wire wrap and because of that I want to show you how wire wrap worked in those days and still does so that's the simplest wire wrap tool you can get it's a manual tool it has two ends and if we look closely I hope uh, this is the you can see this here there are two holes one in the center and another one at the side the side hole is a little bit smaller the center hole is bigger and on the other end we only have one hole and something that's 
sticks out a little bit so I can tell you this is to remove and this is to install the wires okay wires wire wrapping wire comes in boxes like that or on big spools so whatever you like and this has an interesting feature it has here uh, an integrated cutter that cuts the wire like that and it also has an integrated wire stripper it works like that it's just a small piece of metal with the slot in it that is exactly the diameter of the inner wire and it cuts through the insulation and then you pull it back and it's uh, not insulated anymore so then you thread that wire into the smaller hole here until you can see it here like so and then we make our first connection we have to connect pin 7 and 6 together and that's a nice detail they also uh, numbered the pins here on the back side and in the manual is also the back side on the uh, the view uh, in the manual is from the back side so if you mount this on the frame with the pins up you can take the manual and see what connections you have to do so let's take pin 7 the pin goes in the bigger hole and then you wrap that around like that makes a perfect connection now of course there are other tools like this one this is the stripper here and the cutter here so we can use that to strip and cut almost in the same moment you see I only left a short piece of insulation there and of course we also have other wrapping tool like this one it's a semi-automatic well no it's a, a manual tool but you don't have to spin it it spins by itself come on you see it here when I push the handle down okay the function is exactly the same you have to thread the wire in the smaller hole and use the bigger hole for the uh, pin and then you simply squeeze it and the wire is uh, wound up perfectly looks even better than my manual wrap here uh, of course that only works with uh, pins that are not round for example in the earlier days you had this uh, IC sockets here with you can see it they have uh, square um, pins because if you have round pins the wire will simply unwind itself because it acts like a spring but on the square pins here it bites into the corners so the uh, wire itself it maybe can unwrap the first winding but then the next is tight and the third is super tight and when you have 10 windings or so like that that holds for decades okay what's next according to the data sheet I have to connect 17 and 15 I'll do that like 
just now, like so. Maybe I better prepare that wire completely so I don't have to pull on the chip here. There are certainly better tools than this, but it works. There have also been full automatic wrap pistols with the wire uh, inside, so you only have to get the pin you want to wrap around, press the button, and there are also electric uh, models. Okay, one. So I set 17 to 15. Fifteen. Okay, so the end here is not perfect, but that will do for the moment. And I'm also using wire wrap here because I don't want to solder the pins because this chip is still unused and I can remove the wire wraps without any uh, leaving any marks. Okay, I just want to show you how to remove a wrap wire. So we get that in. So let's say I'm connecting pin 10, which is not connected. And I just get that error. So I take the remove tool here slide it over the pin and turn it uh, to the other side so the coil will open up and we can simply remove it so that's the wrap wire here i can cut that away and use the wire again okay that's how it works Okay, then let's hook it up and see how it works. Uh, we need a supply voltage of 24 volts DC. And uh, that goes to pin 7, which is this one here. Then we have ground on pin 9. And we need an output so I'm going to my oscilloscope connecting ground here and output is number 14 that's the one here you see I have added a capacitor and a resistor the capacitor has one microfarad the resistor has 220 Okay, and according to the data sheet, the, the resistor should be between 100K and 1.1 Mac, and the capacitor should be less than 60 microfarad. Well, yes. <coughs> uh, output. We also need an input. No, we first need power. Okay. And that. So I show you what happens. So I'm connecting the input to 5 volts. Input is only... Uh, input is 0 to 7.2 volts. So 5 volt is right in the 
center of that and I'm disconnecting and the output goes up so let me show you that this is the situation when nothing is connected we have on the upper channel output which is high right now low would be about here and the input is low because I did not connect the 5 volts so we have 0 volt at the input that's the line here it will jump out to about here when it is high so now I connect the input and you see the input goes high and the output goes low and when I disconnect the input again now you see the input goes down and after time delay the output goes up so that's the function of this chip it makes a time delay between the negative uh, edge of the input and the output the time delay is determined by what resistor and what capacitors you, you use and it is re-triggerable so if I give different impulses so more impulses here so after the last impulse after the time delay output goes high that means this chip is working almost 50 years no 45 years after uh, it was built and well, that's it. Thanks for watching.